The Short History of the Wrong Road is a movie I started writing five years ago. And I just fell in love with van dwelling <laughs> and <laughs> discovered a whole subculture that I knew nothing about and now know. Did a deep Instagram <laughs> dive. <laughs> Way too much deep. about. <laughs> <laughs> and it was something that just really compelled me and felt like a great lens through which to tell a road trip movie. When I had read the script, I was... I couldn't tell if I was emotional just because I'm a woman or if I was really emotional because I hadn't read a script like that in a very, very long time that was um, not only a coming of age story for a young girl, but more of like a survival story. There was, you know, no, no hint of this character that wasn't like complex and layered and just extremely detailed um, that I was really, really excited to get on board. And honestly, once I met Ani, it kind of, it really s sealed the deal. I know you're laughing, I don't understand why, but like I'm being very serious. Like it really sealed the deal for me because like her passion in telling this story fueled my passion in telling it as well. We kind of did, we worked together a lot in a lot of different ways. I mean, we obviously kind of did a transformation physically and then being, we filmed the movie in Albuquerque we were kind of in the middle of nowhere. And I think that that really puts you in a different headspace, you know, to just remove yourself from the chaos of this world. And that's that's Nola's life. Nola's life was just completely always on the go, on the road. Um, and she lived a very different life than most girls her age, which is why she's a little quirky and she's a little awkward and she's kind of figuring herself out. Um, she doesn't have, you know, this, she doesn't have a female figure from the time she was born, so it's a very interesting character because she's got a lot of layers. I approach casting in a pretty unconventional way <laughs> um, because I just I really want to find people who I connect with just as human beings first, and then for me a, a lot of it is seeing who can bring the most of themselves to the character, and that's why I totally fell in love with Sabrina because uh, she. Well, first, of, okay, there's like a lot of... No, give me all the compliments. But no, but there <laughs> is something that you do that is very <laughs> rare where y you have this quality that I, that I call transparency. I need to like find a better word for it, but it's like mm. even when you're not saying anything, you are so expressive and so much comes through in your face and it's a movie that doesn't have a lot of dialogue and so a lot of it was finding just people whose faces you just could keep watching forever and Sabrina oh wow that was a nice compliment so wow. much with nothing you just said you could um, watch my face forever forever and ever and this movie is 90 minutes of Sabrina's face <laughs> and Danny <laughs> for the Trejo. most part <laughs> and and Danny has that quality too and Maggie has it and Steven has it of just sort of like people who've lived very full lives and bring a lot of their own personal experiences to their roles and we did a lot of improv and mm -hmm. we did a lot of playing around and really sort of having everybody bring as much of themselves to the characters as possible. So that's really what drew me to everybody. We did it from the first audition, you know? She's just like, all right, now just like keep going. And I was like, what? But no, I mean, it's always a treat when you get to do that because you're not usually used to getting that freedom. For me, it always makes it feel more like, like you said, I'm bringing more of myself to the character. Um, and that always, for me, gives a better, more authentic performance. Um, I think I was really lucky that each and every person that I was working with, you know, um, Steven, Maggie, Danny, Rusty, like, and there was, it was such an intimate cast that I could really get to know each and every castmate um, very personally and know that I had a different relationship with each and every character, um, which I think is a huge part of Nola's life and story. All we have is each other because there is no system in place to catch people, uh, you know, when housing isn't a basic right and healthcare isn't a basic right and education is not a basic right and uh, everything has a price tag. The smallest setback really, um, you know, holds people back for generations. And so van dwelling has been this really interesting world that I've been able to explore where it's people really taking matters into their own hands and realizing that, you know, if you can't pay your rent or your mortgage and live, something has to go. And so being able to combine everything into one um, is how a lot of people are surviving right now. And because it's not legal in a lot of states to sleep in your vehicle, it's very much uh, a subculture that's been keeping quiet, but also more and more people are getting more vocal and helping each other out online. Uh, it's a it's a community that really 
is very communicative about helping each other out and figuring out, you know, where you can park, where you can shower, where mm -hmm. you can, you know, stay for longer periods of time. And so uh, it's been really great connecting with people and, and seeing how people are making things work for themselves when this country doesn't have any other alternatives. Yeah.